Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my main progression series where I'm trying to take my kind of newbie-ish 1800 total level account back from 2019 and really push towards maxing the account, unlocking all the gear that I'd ever want, becoming rich and just really doing anything you'd want to do on a main account. Now last episode we finished off by completing the Lumbridge Elite Diaries which are incredibly useful and we finished off a total level 2097 so we're very close to 2100. As always guys if you do enjoy this series I would appreciate it if you leave a like on the video. For every like I get I will gain 100 runecrafting experience for the next episode. Hopefully I didn't mess up a zero there but anyway let's get started. All right, well, that's not a bad way to start the day. A smoldering stone from Cerberus. Now, I actually surprisingly ended up getting a Cerberus task from Konar. Not super common, uh, just because you need Hellhounds specifically in the Taverly dungeon. Still going to do them, but I ended up getting like 200 of them. So I don't think I'm going to do the entire task. I do like Cerberus and I want the Hell Puppy pet, but I really just want to do more Hydra. So in the last episode, we did get the uh, Lumbridge Elite Diary done, which means we do have another block slot. Actually, realistically, we have two because spiritual creatures I don't think are assigned by Koenar. So really, we have two more high-weighted tasks we could block. I'm probably going to do Abyssal Demons, I think, because I just can't see any circumstance where they'd be good to do. And then maybe another just highly weighted one. Okay, another quick task done of Rune Dragons. Uh, we're going to continue doing tasks until we can get a Hydra task. And at that point, I kind of want to do something I've been thinking about doing for a while. Well, there we go. The next task, we ended up getting a Hydra task. So with 175 Hydras, something I've been thinking about doing for a while is actually a T-Bow rebuild. Essentially, I would sell off most of my PVM gear, buy a Twisted Bow, and just start rebuilding with it. Hydra is a really good way to start, because realistically, all you need is the Twisted Bow and a few other pieces of gear. So I went ahead and pulled everything out of my inventory, although one thing I didn't notice at the time is that my Sanguinesti staff isn't actually getting price checked. Uh, because it is full and it wouldn't fit in there. So right now we should be pretty damn close to being able to afford a Twisted Bow. Right now they're around 1.1 bill. Now the only items I am not selling off right now are mainly my Zenite pieces, uh, a few other just really important pieces of gear, but for the most part it's all going. Now a couple months ago we transferred over a little bit under a bill, however now we're going to be buying the Twisted Bow back, but keep in mind we did invest a bunch of money into our buyable skills and we still haven't even used all that up. We have another 300 mil, 400 mil or something invested just into mahogany planks and gold ore, which we are, which is still in our bank. Now, unfortunately, the PVM market in general has kind of crashed. So I'm selling a lot of these at a pretty low point, but who knows, it could just keep going down further. Okay, so right now we're at one bill, 12 mil. I think I will have to sell off my Dragon Warhammer. I was hoping I wouldn't have to. We'll probably have to also dismantle our Basilisk Jaw, although that's pretty unimportant. So right now we have 1 bill, 100 mil, that should be, yeah, more than enough. So we're putting an offer in for 1 bill, 94 mil, and there it is. We have now acquired the Twisted Bow again. If I just kept it from when I originally bought it, I would have made about 200 mil, but whatever. <laughs> so there we go, guys. We finally have a Twisted Bow, and this time it is to keep. We will probably need to buy a bit of armor to go with that, but mid-level ranged armor is pretty damn cheap. Now what's really great about Hydra is if you do have a Twisted Bow, you don't really need much other gear. I can't even wear Pegasian Boots even if I wanted. They'd be a pretty minor upgrade anyway. But yeah, besides that, we just have God Dehyde. Uh, we have our Ranging Cape. Uh, we have our Archer Ring. Although that actually could be upgraded to a Ring of the Gods, but we can't afford that right now. Okay, so the first kill with the T-Bow is all right. It's going to take a little while to get used to the rhythm of it. But yeah, this thing hits like a truck. It's crazy. Now one thing I noticed right after I did a few kills at Hydra is that my loot tab is actually fairly substantial. If I'm going to be doing nearly 200 kills of Hydra, I might as well just try to upgrade my gear a little bit. So I sold off pretty much my entire loot tab and we ended up with just a bit over 40 mil, which means we could afford the armadillo chest blade. Now it is possible maybe I should upgrade the Ring of the Gods first. I'm not really sure exactly what one ends up being better, but we're going to go for the chest blade for now. Well, that didn't take very long. We got our new PB of a minute, 42 seconds. I know that's nothing crazy to begin with here, but we're only on like, but I don't think we're even 200 kills into Hydra yet. So I'm sure it will get lower. Now I've been working on this room crafting level for what feels like a couple days now, but actually it doesn't feel that bad because I know I'm making pretty decent money and it's just really low intensity. It doesn't require pretty much any effort. 
But there we go, there's level 80 runecrafting, a really great milestone level, although you don't unlock anything. The next major goal for me right now is 82, so at that point we can do the Fremenic Elite Diary, and maybe then at that point, I'll finally do Dagonoth Kings, never done them before. I mean, I'll actually have to do them for the diary, so there's no getting around that. Okay, so I was perusing my bank after another 30 or 40 kills, and I noticed my Blood Rune stack is actually pretty damn big. I've been doing a lot of Blood Rune crafting, on the side, and while it's not the best money in the game, it's very AFK and the blood runes kind of stack up pretty quickly. That in combination from getting a ton of them from Hydra means I actually might be able to afford another gear upgrade. Uh, so after selling off our nearly 15 mil stack of blood runes, uh, we're up to around 23 mil and I think if we sell off the Bandless God Sword, which while pretty useful, uh, we're not going to be using it for a while, that'll get us around 30 mil, which means we can buy an additional armor piece. We're going to go for the Armadillo Chain Skirt for now. Which means we're pretty much right back to where we started already, and we've only been doing Hydra for a couple hours. Well, there's another unique, I guess, the Hydra Tail. I think that's worth, uh, well, I should probably just Alk that, to be honest. Oh, wow, there... <laughs> oh my god, there's the Hydra Leather on, the, what, kill count 200 or something, now... Now I think I'm definitely officially spooned. No, I think last time I definitely was as well. Hydra Leather is not a bad drop, actually. That is a really solid drop, and I think actually with that, I might be able to afford another gear upgrade. Now the final item I really want to upgrade here is the ring slot. Now I'm pretty sure the ring of the gods imbued is best in slot at Hydra and that is mainly because the prayer bonus you get from the ring of the gods is more valuable than a minor increase in accuracy. So we'll actually have to sell off our amulet of torture but with another 120 Hydra kills left to do I should definitely be able to buy it back after. Now with pretty much every PVM item crashing currently, it's a little interesting to see the Ring of the Gods actually going up. Like it's not even buying for 22 mil. Okay, so we ended up buying it for actually close to 23 mil, a very expensive item, but I think it's going to be helpful. So we're going to go and it with some Nightmare Zone points and try it out. Now for some odd reason you need a Holy Wrench to imbue the Ring of the Gods, I don't know why, but anyway luckily we didn't throw that away. So there we go, we just imbued our Ring of the Gods, now this will give us a really significant prayer bonus which should help make our trips last longer, but this will make our trips last potentially an hour. I actually didn't think the Ring of the Gods would make this much of a difference, but it is really noticeable how much slower your prayer drains with it, and it does make a pretty big difference. I brought like 10 prayer potions here and I've only gone through like a couple of them. Okay, so there we go, that's a pretty good PB, a minute 32, obviously you can do better than that. But now we're almost down to a minute 30, which is really, really good. I've put in a few different tile markers this time to try to increase my kill speeds, and it definitely has made a pretty big difference. Now pretty much in between Hydra kills, I've been doing just blood rune crafting. So there we go, there is 81 rune crafting, only one more level to go until we can complete another elite diary. We're really trying to make a big push onto rune crafting. I don't think I'm gonna do it all at once. I don't think I'm the type of person to do blood rune crafting for three months straight, but you know what, see you guys in three months. Hey, another drop, the Hydra Fang, that's actually great. I can't remember if we have all the pieces now. Uh, no, that's actually our second one. I forgot. They always come in the exact same order. So we already have the Hydra Eye, we got the Hydra Fang now, so we only have one more piece of the puzzle. And then we can go get ourselves a Brimstone Ring, but I'm already pretty damn lucky on that one. Oh, no, 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 that was literally the next kill. Oh my god. Another Hydra Claw on kill count 277. Come on, man. There are poor kids around the world that would love to have a Hydra Claw. Oh my god, so back to back uniques from Hydra, two Hydra Claws in under 300 kills, wow what a trip that was, 56.5 mil, I don't even know what to say, I uh, wish I didn't liquidate my entire bank. Now once again I'm going to make the Dragon Hunter Lance myself, I'm not really sure if this is actually more money this way, but it does kind of protect against just some fluke happening, I don't know. Maybe the only offering for a Hydra Claw was that like, one mil, who knows, crazier things have happened. So there we go, we sold the Dragon Hunter Lance and that's, well, pretty much just a 55 mil profit. Now because we just did a Twisted Bow rebuild, we actually need to buy back a few things I had to kind of sell in between. We need to buy our Torture back and we also need to buy back our Tormented Bracelet. Now for the final item, kind of going to be situational for now. I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy the Dragon Warhammer. But honestly, I don't really know what I'm going to use the Dragon Warhammer for yet. It's just a really staple piece of PVM gear, so we're going to buy it for now. I may swap it out for something else, though. 
There we go, we are finally done our Hydra task. We gained 209,000 Slayer experience. I actually don't know if I want another Hydra task. I'm gonna do because it's such good money, but I just spent the entire week doing them. But okay, there we go, Black Dragons. So there's the loot now from 327 Hydra kills. Right now we're looking at 150 mil in loot, which is crazy. Realistically, we should only have about 50 mil maybe. Wow, I've actually never really seen this animation up close. It kind of just looks like I'm smacking myself with a vial, but we've been doing so much blood rune crafting that I'm actually going to get a mining level. It's kind of crazy because you know, I'm only getting like 3,000 experience per hour here, but there is 75 mining, which also coincidentally brought us to 2,100 total level. A really awesome milestone. I'm happy to be here. So I think this is probably going to be the final rune crafting level I'm going to do for now. This is going to be 82 rune crafting which means we can do the fremenic elite diary which is the main goal for the last couple of weeks now undoubtedly i'll be doing passive rune crafting training whenever i feel like it but again like i said earlier i'm not going to make a big goal of trying to do this as quickly as possible i just don't really see the point i think it's way easier for me to get burned out that way i think every week i'm just going to shoot for maybe a couple hundred thousand rune crafting experience maybe three or four hundred thousand and we'll get it done eventually well, you guys want to take one guess at the really important item I forgot. Uh, well, that would be arrows. <laughs> Nothing to shoot them with. <sighs> that really sucks, actually. Okay, so I literally could not kill Prime with anything else except for range. It just wasn't going to happen. So we had to run all the way back here. But anyway, there we go. We've killed one of all of the Dagonoth Kings. I am curious to come back here. Uh, now that we have the noted Dagonoth Bones, I'll probably do it eventually. There we go, we just crafted 56 Astral Runes at once. Uh, there is another Fremenic task done. And the final diary requirement here is just to make a Dragonstone Amulet. This little Clay Forge thing here, but anyway, we are done. That means we're done the Fremenic Elite Diary, which is really exciting. The Fremenic Elite Diary is useful for a few different reasons. First up here, we're going to get the Fremenic Boots 4, which is the best teleport for Vorkath, I believe. Now on top of that, we get 50,000 experience, which I originally was planning just to dump right into runecrafting. However, after thinking about it a bit, I decided I'm going to put it into agility. It's pretty much just as bad of a skill to level up. However, I'm actually really close to the Hallowed Sepulchre Floor 4, which means I think just giving the extra 50,000 experience there will be a bit more notable than, um, well, a drop in the bucket for my 99 runecrafting goal. So anyway, guys, I think that's going to be pretty much all for today. We made a lot of big changes today. I mainly, of course, the Twisted Bow. And while we started with just pretty much the Twisted Bow, we managed to get extremely lucky and make a fair bit of money back. So we have the Twisted Bow as well as a few pieces of high-end gear. We also unlocked another extremely useful diary and leveled up my runecrafting a fair bit as well. In the next episode, I think I'm going to be working heavily on some skilling. I still have level 99 smithing and construction bank, so I'm probably going to start working on those a bit, as well as any of my other lower level skills. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Just recently, two more Dragon Tier members have joined. Colin Corley and Red Kamikaze. They're joining Timothy Chen, Cappy, Guy Fox, Valhalla Lad, Brian Robinson, Brad Sings, Ocelot, and Kush Patel. All at the Dragon tier, making it actually the most popular tier. I never thought that would happen. You guys are so generous. Thank you again. Also, a massive thank you to Birdbot, Base Titch, All Things Gaming, and of course, all of the rest of my YouTube members. As always, guys, if you're looking for a way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in all of my future videos, get access to my video release schedule, and get a custom role in my Discord channel. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.